Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If this is your very first time ever tuning in to one of my live broadcasts, my name is Nicole Walters of Nicole walters.com and i'm an entrepreneur a business owner i'm a mom and i'm also a wife which means i have a lot going on just like you and because of this i always have to manage making sure that I have it all together, making sure that I don't do too much. And you know what? Sometimes I don't do a great job. And I've heard from lots of you that this is something you struggle with as well. You're doing all the things. You're trying to be in all the places. And before you know it, you are feeling overwhelmed, fatigue, exhaustion, and you're just saying to yourself, how do I push through? So that's what this series of conversations has been about. For the past three, for the last night, today, and tomorrow, as a three-part series, I have brought on some dear friends of mine and industry experts in burnout, the Woodruffs. And they're here today, uh, Dr. Admira and Dr. Warren Woodruff. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you, guys. Now, if this is your very first time ever tuning in, I want you guys to just say hello. If you've been watching for a long time, just say what's up. This is going to be a lot of fun, and um, and you're going to get so much out of it. So just pay a lot, pay attention, take notes. We're going to have a homework assignment for you at the end because I'm all about getting stuff done, and the Woodruffs are all about you guys putting this stuff into practice. So let's first recap for anyone who may have missed yesterday's conversation. So if you're just tuning on, we're having a conversation about fighting burnout. Now, let's just do a quick recap because if you missed it, it was a great chat and you can still catch it. It's below on my Facebook page. So uh, the Woodruffs, give us a quick recap. What exactly is burnout and who suffers from it? So burnout is a chronic state of stress, which leads to both mental exhaustion and physical exhaustion. And I know Warren was talking yesterday about some of the symptoms of that. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. some of the symptoms, lack of motivation to complete tasks, um, like she said, chronic stress, wanting to quit your job, memory loss. Um, there's, just a, there's just a whole list of things that um, are, are, is what's considered burnout. But the thing is, everyone suffers from it. Um, nobody, you know, can say that they're, they've never had burnout in their life, so... Sure. So it's something that everyone, no one is exempt from. I think it's very easy for, and moms, if we have some moms that are on here, if we have some, um, you know, career women who've been working all this time, uh, ladies, tell me, are you ever finding that it feels like people only think that you can get burned out if you have a nine to five? I don't think I'm the only person who thinks that where it's like, you know, oh, well, if you're not going to the office every day, there's no way that you're dealing with burnout. There's no way that you're super overwhelmed. If you don't have, you know, 10 kids versus three kids or one kid, you know, or if you're just spending time all day at home managing the house, there's no way you could get burned out. I mean, it almost feels like there's a lack of understanding around the fact that when you're a mom, you're actually working longer hours than most people. Am I right, Woodruff? Tell me a little bit more about that. Like, is that something that you guys encounter, you know, with some of the experts at the stay-at-home mom life or being a mom, that that's something that's overlooked as a, you know, trigger of burnout? It's completely overlooked. Exactly what you said about people just think of it as like the nine to five, you're going to work. It's so crazy. You're stressful. You come home and you're trying to relax and maybe you can't. But no, for the stay-at-home parents, also for entrepreneurs, when you don't have a really, um, structured schedule it's easier to get burnout because when does it ever end wow ladies women moms business owners nighttime entrepreneurs side hustlers think about this it's actually easier for us to get burnt out because we never stop working we're going to the nine to five when we when we get home, we're doing our second jobs. And if you're a mom who has your kids, guess what? They go to bed. And then how many of you guys, let me know right now, how many of you guys, once the kids go to bed, the real shift begins? The laundry, the the lunches, the prepping, the dinners, you know? And and that doesn't even include paying attention to your husband. Am I right? So, so moms out there, if you are just tuning in, if you are just jumping on, we are having a conversation about fighting burnout, that feeling of exhaustion, that feeling of fatigue that just overwhelms us and keeps us from hitting our personal goals and from serving the people that we love the most, the very best. And we're doing that with industry experts, Dr. Amira and Dr. Warren Woodruff. And they're teaching us all about what burnout looks like and how to avoid it. So um, 
man, it's just, I mean, if you guys only see these comments, people, everyone's like, yes, 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 yes. This is the truth. Burnout is real. It is not pleasant and I am living it. So uh, that said, let's just recap a couple of quick ways we can identify burnout, some consequences of it. So if we're experiencing it, how does burnout actually manifest in our life? Because I have a feeling that some of these women are going to say to themselves, you know what, burnout is real, but I I don't want to make excuses because we're overachievers. We're going to be like, oh, we do all the things. It's just what it always is. So help, help, me, help us out. How would we know burnout starting to happen in our lives? So an example could be, you know, you're extremely tired at the end of the day. You're laying in bed. You're like, I need to get some sleep. And then you're just sitting there and you cannot fall asleep. And your mind is just racing um, I know all the time. And I'm let's like, pause on that one. How many of you guys are feeling that? Just give me Just give me a, a yeah. Yeah, that's me. Uh, what is what is mind silence? What is mine turning off? I don't even know what that is. It's 24. I mean, as a mom, I feel like I'm constantly keeping a list of either things that need to happen, things that haven't happened, you know, stuff that needs ordered. And that's not even work. That is like just the kids. Like who has dance practice? Who's been fed? Like I can't shut it off. It's like I'm ready for bed and I can't, you know? So so that's one symptom. What's another symptom that people are, are bound to see? We're seeing lots of yeses. Moms are like, that's me. Burnout's real. So what are some other symptoms? I think the big takeaway from yesterday was being forgetful about things. It starts off small, like, did I talk to that person? I was supposed to call them. Mm -hmm. Or the example you gave of, I just drove to work, but I don't remember. How I got there. Yes. Yeah. You just think, oh, I've just been tired. It's been a rough week. Or or someone said in the comments yesterday that I just thought I was getting older. No, that's not normal to not know how you got somewhere. Wow. Wow. Now I know that I will, I'll I'll be honest. That's a little scary to me. You know, like that's the type of thing that makes me feel like I want to do something about burnout because being forgetful one, I don't really have time for it. You know what I mean? Like I'm just so busy. I have so much going on that I really want to be on top of my A game. You know, kids are a lot to manage. Business is a lot to manage. I want to be on my A game. But aside from that, it is kind of scary to think that you get in the car and you just end up at a destination. And you're like, wait a minute, I just went like robot mode. You know what I mean? Like one minute I'm getting in the car in the morning, left turn, right turn, a little bit of traffic, boom, I'm in the office. I don't even remember my exit. You know what I mean? Like, and and I think that some of you guys related with that. Some of you guys were like, yeah, like I'll have conversations say, did I even have that conversation? Or like, oh my gosh, I've got one. Moms, tell me if I'm not the only one. Have you ever had a time where a kid will say something to you like, mom, can I get the blah, blah, blah? And then you're like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Or at least you, you think you said that. Then you come back around and they're doing the thing that they asked to do. And you're like, did I tell you you could do that? Did I tell you that you were allowed to do that? Why are you watching TV? Let me just get a yes if you've ever done that. And you literally don't even remember giving them permission to do that. You're like, I was, I was juggling so many things. I don't even remember saying it was okay for you to have dessert. Like, I don't remember that conversation. Like if, if you have ever done that as a mom, guess what? You may be in that state of overwhelm. So if you're just hopping on, guess what? We're talking about burnout. That story might've sounded familiar and we're trying to get to solutions. So you guys work with people, um, with, with professionals, with mothers, with anyone who's juggling a lot of different things to really help them identify burnout in their life and start implementing ways without taking away from their life, right? In order to, to find more balance. So I know you start it off by doing this for yourselves, right? Now yeah. tell me a little bit about that. How did you guys start doing this for yourselves? Warren, we heard about your basketball career, your your burgeoning NBA career yesterday. If you guys missed, missed that video, watch that tomorrow. Showtime. Uh, but uh, Dr. Amira, can you tell me a little bit about uh, where you've seen that manifest in your life? Yeah. Uh, and you were like, I got to change this. Yeah. Well, one thing I do want to say that we didn't say yesterday is that one of the reasons we really care about this is because we love caring. We like caring for people. And in our jobs as dentists, we care about the body. So it's like yes. the, the more physical science of it. But right. what you probably don't know is that we actually both were psychology majors in college. No so- way! Uh, I didn't know that. So that you're all about this. You're all in people's heads right now. We yeah. care about the mind. We care about the things that people don't want to talk about. It's all sure. about the body, not just the physical part of the body, the mental part too. Yes. So, um, so that's why one of the things we really care about and why it's important for us. But for me, um, I think it was more uh, working. And I think I mentioned yesterday, too, that I would um, I was so excited to become a dentist. Dental school is very difficult. I was burnt out in dental school. But I thought, OK, 
I finish. I'm going to be working. I did it's great. it. I did oh, it. Wait, can we talk about finish lines? Pretend finish lines. How many of us do that? Where yeah. we're like, oh, it'll just get better as of this date. Or yeah. I just need to be okay until the kids start kindergarten. Or I'll just be fine as long as this season at work is done. Once we get past tax season, then I'll be fine. Right. But guess what? It never seems to end. And yeah. then we push ourselves and burnout shows up. So I'm guessing that's what happened to you, Dr. Mira. Exactly. That's exactly oh. Exactly. And so I would get to work and I was loving what I was doing, but something was missing. And I felt for me that it was like, I didn't know where to end. I didn't know. I didn't have the boundary of when I was supposed to stop being a dentist. When yeah. was Luna supposed to let down just at home? Am I supposed to go to the grocery store and still be the dentist? But I didn't like that. And I didn't like feeling like that. And so I ignored it for a while, but that was kind of my, my, um, I would come home and I would be tired, but almost too tired to do something to perk myself up. Like I didn't even want yeah. to, I didn't want to do anything, sure. but I would do something. And so for me, it was just getting out of that one dimensional box that I felt like society put me in. And it could have sure. been myself in it, but whatever the case, I felt like I was in it. And I know a lot of people can relate to that. But then like, wow. You can't, be more or all the aspects of you uh, that you are. We're not just one thing. We're way more than what people see. Oh my gosh. Moms. Like, I mean, everyone on here is like, yes. Like, I mean, honestly, I think especially moms, just because you feel bad almost saying that like your kids aren't enough or your family's not enough. And the truth is I'm a big believer that family comes first, right? Family comes first. However, they, they don't have to be everything. You know, my family is my world. I love them, but I have so much to offer the world and I want to be impactful. And when my kids go off and do their own thing, I want to have something going on, you know? And I love hearing that it sounds like that's part of the solution, discovering what I'm more than, which is, I know that's your, your business and your site is what are you more than.com. You guys help people explore that. Um, figuring out what I'm more than actually can help me with burnout is what that sounds like. Are there any other good tools and tips and tricks that anyone tuning in right now is able to apply today to start finding more of that piece? Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, just spending 30 minutes a day doing something. Um, if you were to add up 30 minutes a day over a course of a year, that comes out to 11,680 minutes. Or wow. 194 hours of, of, this could be anything you're, you're, you love doing. I mean, it could be sports or it could be even a side hustle. Imagine if you put 194 hours into something and how successful you could be into doing something that you love. So, Oh my gosh, I love that. So let's go ahead and go over those numbers, you guys. And I think that everyone on here now that has like a full-time job that takes up their whole life or a handful of kids that you can't even manage or a household you're trying to keep together, how many of you can remember the last time you spent a solid three hours doing something just to make you happy? Just go ahead and give me a note on that because, I mean – the Woodruffs broke it down for us right now. We're talking 30 minutes a day, right? That's equivalent to one TV show or, you know, a 30 minutes, 30 minutes in the tub. I mean, just 30 minutes a day of self-care is what they're talking about here. And can any of the moms on here tell me, just say like, uh, yeah, that's not me. When was the last time you took time for yourself in a dedicated, focused way? Um, I know that I can't remember the last time. My life is all business all the time. And I spend time with my kids and I enjoy that. But but that isn't all that I am either, you know? So it's one of those things where I cannot remember the last time I spent. It's probably been, I'm not going to lie, a year. It's probably been a solid maybe 10 months to a year where I've actually said, this is just for me. This is just for me. And it isn't like frantic recovery so that I can just barely make it. We're not talking about sick days, right? We're not talking about sick days. We're not talking about if I don't stop right now, I literally won't function. We're talking about preventing burnout. We're talking about getting into a habit that keeps it away. And Dr. Woodruff is talking about micro time frames added up over a year that equals 194 hours at the end all but 30 minutes a day. So I love that. Um, now, what type of things can we do with this sort of time? I mean, what do you recommend is something that's realistic, but also impactful? Well, I know for me, like I mentioned before, I didn't, uh, when I was tired, I didn't even feel like exercising or anything. Sure. But even, and also I love to sleep in in the morning, but waking up 30 minutes earlier, mm -hmm. just to walk on the treadmill. Just to go for a jog, even if you're not outside, just inside, mm -hmm. just a little time to yourself. You feel like, well, I don't have the extra time. I need that extra sleep. But doing that little bit of extra self-care prevention yeah, yeah. 
more effective later on, makes you more effective throughout the day when you felt like, well, I, I use that extra time for myself, but today seems like I have more time than I did yesterday when I didn't spend that extra time for myself. Why sure. Sure, sure. So setting myself up to not only be more pro productive during the day, but also making sure that I am setting the tone for myself. So I got to say, like, um, I love a good sleep in, but you're completely right. Waking up 30 minutes earlier, just beating the kids to the punch, because I know my kids wake up early, early, early. But if I can squeeze in an extra 30 minutes to do something active. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a jogger not gonna happen, but I will do a little bit of treadmill, you know, and I also love this idea of just, even if it's just going, stepping outside, getting a good deep breath of air, walking into the house and doing some laps around the kitchen island. Um, I love this. Pamela on here said gardening, you know, Carmen saying more energy. It's so necessary to have that extra energy. So you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I want to know moms, have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to get to the gym? I'm going to get outside. I'm going to make this part of my routine. But before you know it, the day gets away from you and it never happens. It sounds like the front end of the day is the way that we can maximize that time by, by just, even if we start with 15 minutes, maybe, and then going to 30 and so on and so forth. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Now, um, I want to know, is anyone on here who's saying to themselves, yeah, you know what? You're not wrong. If I probably squeeze in a few minutes, I may actually be a little better during the day. If I could just find that time. Now, now, uh, Dr. Woodruff, can you let us know, like, what else is um, a, a great takeaway? What else could we do that is something we can apply today that, you know, maybe as an exercise or anything like that, but just something that's like a, an, an attitude or a mindset um, or even an action that we'd be able to use now in order to see more success? Well, one thing is definitely starting to create some boundaries for yourself, even if it's as simple as there's Ooh, a she went there, she went there, she went there, she went there. Ooh. A day where we put our phones down because phones means extra work. It means going through social media, wasting time, not doing anything. You mentioned earlier about like mom guilt. You might have posted a picture of you out with your friends one day. And then someone may have commented like, who's watching the kids? Ooh, wait, so we have a lot to unpack here because I did not think we were going to go there. But clearly we're going to go there because it's related to burnout and you guys are the experts. So if you're opening the box, we're going to go there. So the first thing that we're hearing here is that we need to set boundaries. Now, boundaries, let's just talk about defining that. Let's unpack that a little bit. Now, I know that it's very easy when you're a mom. You're, my kids, if they physically see me, mom is open for business. So oh. if I am, you know, it, if I'm cooking in the kitchen or if I am in the middle of doing something, it doesn't matter. If my kids can see me, I'm available. They're talking to me. They're asking me questions. They're inundating me. With, they, they, had, they need something. They're pulling on me. I mean, they just need, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So what's a great way just just top of your head i mean you guys are experts to start setting some boundaries in my house what does that look like is it like an hour at the end of the day or mom's out of business or going to my room what does that look like because i'm nervous about it but i know that this is something i need to do because you guys are the pros and and i imagine it's something i need to do i don't think it's a good idea to set like a physical boundary like okay. who's in her room you can't come in because that's sure. I don't think that's... Uh... They might receive that the wrong way. Right. So what's a great way for me to start putting boundaries in? Because I love this whole, like, put my phone down or, you know, yeah. something like that. So what does that look like? So if it's just for you, I feel like it's a time from even if it's 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Okay. Time, whether it's reading, whether you need to catch up on something, but something where you know you're not going to be interrupted during that time. That's good. You have boundaries that are for the whole family. Okay. From one hour... No one touches their phone, and it's how was everyone's day? What was the best part of your day today? What was the worst part? Oh, that's horrible. How can we make it better? Something that's including everyone. Like, that's good. Yeah. That's really good because honestly, fighting burnout doesn't necessarily mean just me by myself. I mean, as a family collectively, because my teenagers get burned out. I mean, we're at the end of the year and they're working so, so hard and people don't really talk about that much, that burnout something that can affect, you know, young people as well, especially if they're driving to hit their goals. Like, I, have you ever seen a six-year-old burnt out running at the playground, doing all the school stuff, go, go, go? It's not a pretty sight either. So uh, if you're just tuning in, we are having a discussion all about fighting burnout, the overwhelm, the stress, the fatigue, the things that keep us from being our best selves. And we're doing that with Dr. Amira and Dr. Warren Woodruff of What Are You More? 
morethan.com. They are experts and they are helping us kind of piece all this stuff together. So we just mentioned the importance of setting boundaries, not just for ourselves from our families, but setting boundaries within our family. And you guys gave us this great piece of advice that guys, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but we've got lots of moms on here and some industry experts in teens that are saying like, I work with teens and it's hard for them. They need help. So we can be a great example by saying things like, you know what, for an hour, we're shutting down. We're sitting down and we're all going to talk and look at each other. And I don't care if we don't say anything. We're going to sit here and stare at each other. This is mommy, mommy family staring time. We're mm-hmm. all going to sit here and stare. <laughs> right? I love the sound of that. Now, now, uh, moms that are on here, business owners, entrepreneurs, how many of you guys are saying to yourself, this is something that you absolutely think you would benefit from? So that if there was some sort of quiet or shutdown, even if it's 30 minutes of time with you by yourself or you with your family, just time to piece through those questions. Um, another great place to do that would probably be in the car. Does that count? Like, you know, just taking that time to just, because I think Dr. Warren said something yesterday about how when he was really in the thick of business building, he was listening to business stuff in the car, dentist tapes. I didn't know they had dentist tapes. <laughs> I know it was a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it it definitely helps if you can just if you're driving to work, even in silence, and just you know allowing your bra- brain to relax just a little bit and not always be focused on listening to something. It, it helps a lot. It helps. I mean, even in the shower too in the morning. Yeah. Um, you want to listen to music or or something else, but if you can use that time to just kind of take a mental just break. And mental break. I love it. Yeah, I think that when you're a mom, I mean, like, it's a running joke in my house. We shower on Fridays. I just, the day gets away from me. I'm wearing the clothes that I had on the floor, and I'm just like, I I just got to go. But you're completely right when you say that, like, if I say to myself, my shower time is going to be my shower time, this is going to be a full 30 minutes, and I'm just going to enjoy it. Like, I'm not just getting in there, scrubbing what I need to do, and then getting out, you know, like, it's, which is, I think, one of those signs of burnouts when you're just like business, 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 instead of thinking, you know, how can I do this great, you know, and how can I spend spend time with my family and just really enjoy it. So I absolutely love that. We've got people on here saying, yes, I need quiet time or this is great advice. Um, So let's talk homework because I know everyone's taking time out of their day. Thank you guys so much for hopping on and sticking with us. And thank you for tuning in to part two of this three-part series on fighting burnout in your life, in your career, and in your homes. Uh, We're doing this with the uh, lead creators at What are you more than.com where they help you figure out what else do you have to offer to the world and why you should do that one because it helps you avoid burnout and two because it allows you to bring your best gifts to the world and, and be a happier more well-rounded you so um we've got homework right because it's nothing to just listen to these things all day am i right and i'm pretty sure everybody that is tuning in right now you guys are doers let me just get a yeah i like to get it done i like to do the work i like to see real change i'm not just a listener i'm a putter into practicer or at least i want to be right so um let's talk a little bit about this homework assignment and um and let's get the details to everyone so that that way they can come to our next uh chat tomorrow and report their details so let me hear all about it. Yeah, so grab a pen, grab paper. Grab and a pen, grab some paper. I want you to write down your top three symptoms of burnout. And the reason this is important is because tomorrow when we discuss this, you're going to find out that you're not alone. Um, there's a lot of times that you you have these symptoms and you're like, man, is this, no one else uh, is dealing with this. But when we discuss this, you're going to be very surprised to see that everyone is dealing with the same symptoms. And the wow. thing is first figuring out, it's just assessing, where are you today? So that's, it takes one minute to do. We talked about some of the symptoms. What are the top three that you're experiencing personally today? That is so valuable. And I'm going to do the assignment too, because I, a lot of you guys raised your hand and said, I'm dealing with burnout. It's something I'm experiencing. It's difficult for me. I would love for you guys to write these out. And here's why. Here are the two benefits. One, it'll allow us to utilize these experts that are here right now to help us target fixing those things. You're going to get immediate results out of it. And then the other reason why is it is so freeing to your fellow business owner, entrepreneur, mom, when we're honest with ourselves when we put out our hot mess and we say bravely, look, one of the ways I know I'm messing up is I'm short tempered with my kids. I'm snapping, you know, and I know that that's not my best self and, and I'm doing this thing. And then another mom's going to be on here saying, yeah, me too. You know, and, and I never even realized that was a symptom of burnout. And now that you've said it, I realize that's not who I want to be. So, so bring your top three, 
to the call tomorrow. We're going to be meeting here at 7 p.m. Eastern with uh, with Dr. Amira and Dr. Warren Woodruff to talk a little bit more about actual tools. We're going to take those three things and we're going to give you a tool that you're able to access and utilize in order to fight this burnout. If you want to learn more, head over to whatareyoumorethan.com. So can you guys repeat that homework assignment for us one more time for anyone hopping on so that they have it? And then, um, and then we're going to head out. Yeah. So you're going to list your top three symptoms that you are experiencing with burnout um, right now. And from that, like I said, we're going to discuss it tomorrow and we're going to come up with some solutions. I love it. I love it. Now, uh, before we jump off, does anyone have any questions? We have the opportunity right now to have these industry experts on here. So if you have any questions like, man, what does burnout look like um, in my life? Or I've been doing this thing. Is this a symptom of burnout? Or, oh my goodness, I'm just loving this session. And I just want to let you know this series is being so great. Just let us know in the comments below and they're going to be huge helps. Now, oh my gosh, the questions are pouring in. So uh, the first question that we have for you guys is, can burnout actually affect the way that I treat my children? Is that something I should be looking for? That's a great one. The one you just mentioned about being short tempered and people think, oh, you know, it just happens. Kids are talking to me all day, but no, it's actually something that's a symptom of burnout as well. You're not wow. having time for yourself to be able to respond the way that you know is how you typically would respond. And I have an sure. example of that even in the professional field. When I was in dental school, I had a mentor who was a pediatric dentist. And I was considered, uh, considering doing that. And I asked him, you're dealing with kids all day in stressful situations. A lot of them don't want to be there or are scared to be there. They're not your kids. So you can't discipline them in the way you may if they were your own children. Does that affect how you treat your kids at home? And he said, absolutely. And he did not know what to do about it. Wow. Wow, that's amazing and so, 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 so valuable. Um, we've got a great question that's on here, and this one's from Tabitha. She said, how do you know the, if the burnout is actually further than just a simple fix? Because I think that's something that we always deal with. So um, how do we know if it's gone maybe too far, further than we want it to? I think it's when you start having like, those negative thoughts, like, I just don't know, you know what's next for me, or I want to quit. I just can't do this anymore. Or oh, I, that's good. I just don't have inter any energy to do anything else. Like when you start having just those really deep negative thoughts, that's when I feel like you're in the advanced stages of burnout and something needs to be done immediately to help get you out of that funk because as it continues to get worse, it can negatively affect your health, your family, your friends. And that's what we want to prevent. That's our main goal is to not have it affect your health because it's not just your mental health, but it's your physical health too. And that's, that's a serious thing with that. That is so good. That's so good. So we have a question here that um, someone's popping up and actually a couple of people posted this out up. Um, does burnout manifest as anxiety and depression at times? Are the, do, are the two connected? You know, do we, do we find that one is either a symptom of, or are they related or do they coexist? So they're related, but clinically, they're not the same thing. So mm -hmm. you can have symptoms of depression because of burnout, but depression isn't burnout. Gotcha. Um, hopelessness is also a symptom of burnout, and that can be a symptom of depression as well. But, but sure. clinically speaking, in terms of like a diagnosis, they are separate things. There are separate things, but we definitely wouldn't want to let one go too far because it could probably trigger the other. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good to know. Very good to know. And we're getting lots of thanks about it. Like, thank you. I was worried about this. I appreciate that. Um, we're loving this important conversation. Guys, thank you so much for hopping on. This is all so helpful. So, so helpful. And um, and I got to say, I so appreciate you guys taking the time out to, to one, bring light to this important issue that I think a lot of us have a tendency to overlook. A lot of us have a tendency to um, to say, okay, we got this, it's figured out, we're not worried about it, or to um, gloss over the importance of um, addressing it immediately and how it impacts other things we love in our life, like our families and our business and our entrepreneurial ventures. So I'm so excited that you guys are taking the time out to chat with us. And I'm even more excited about all the offerings that you have at whatareyoumorethan.com. Um, I mean, I know that you guys, you you have information, you've got articles, you guys have tools, you have assessments, you have a great Facebook group that people can get into to have a place to talk through some of these things as they're on that journey. Um, and I know that you guys have a tool that you guys are are probably going to make available. I know we're going to talk about it a little more tomorrow, but it's called Fight Burnout. 
right? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit, just high level, while before, so we can let these moms go, high level, tell me a little bit about this fight burnout tool, what it covers, and, and how it works. Yeah, so with fight burnout, it's a great tool because it's going to help you first discover that you have, you're dealing with burnout, but then we have our own signature method and assessment that we're going to be able to apply um, throughout the course that we're offering that's going to help you not only discover what your areas of burnout are, but how to get out of it. And so, um, it's wow. really, yeah, it's really, uh, it's just going to take a deeper dive than our conversations that we've been having the last sure. few days. And so I, I really highly recommend it for anyone that, think, that thinks they're suffering from burnout. Um, I love that. Um, use our signature method to really help you out. That's really great. So there at, at least is a place to start. So if anyone's looking to learn a little bit more about that, you can head over to www.fightburnout.com. It's something you can tackle today. It's something you can tackle quickly and start implementing solutions that are actually going to create change. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time out again. Everyone, go do that burnout assessment at fightburnout.com. Um, and we will be back tomorrow to talk about some more targeted techniques. And you have to bring your homework with you. Give me the top three ways that you are experiencing burnout and where you're seeing it happen in your life. And we are going to go ahead and get you the answers with industry experts, the Woodruffs, right here. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. Thank you guys for joining. Um, and we will see you tomorrow here at 7 p.m. Eastern.